Sorry, I think I have to refresh it. Okay, we're live now. Welcome, councillors, CEO, executive, and uh, those who are joining us in our virtual gallery. Perhaps for the last time, we're hopeful that we might be able to start moving to new arrangements in the future, but it may take some time yet. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Welcome to the October Council meeting. Um, I need to read some advice from the government, which I will just shorten because uh, uh, to say that this is relatively new and unfortunately it's become all too familiar. But the key points I need to say is that uh, by meeting uh, online, we're complying with the uh, uh, instructions from the Victorian government and from the minister and complying fully. We're using a system uh, that, uh, that minimizes risk to cybersecurity. Uh, we have a broadcasting a live audio stream. Uh, we'll operate with uh, all our meeting procedures that uh, comply with local law. Uh, and the way we undertake our business. And as councillors, we're able to see each other and our community is able to hear the meeting, the debate and council resolutions. And should we have any technical problems, which we hope that we don't, uh, we'll have to adjourn to another time. Um, thank you, councillors. I'll move in, first of all, to acknowledge uh, the, uh, the country. I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on the country of the data or wrong. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the area were on and their forebears. We acknowledge their living culture and the unique role in the life of the region. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. The council prayer, almighty God, we ask you to be present in this council. Direct and guide our deliberations. We ask you to grant us wisdom and sensitivity as we deal with the business of our shire. May each decision that we make advance the well-being of all our residents. This we pray. Amen. Councillors, we have an agenda before us set out. Uh, again, welcome. Uh, I think we have no apologies. I think we, we are a full, full house. We have no leave of absence. Councillors, disclosures of conflict of interest. Are there any conflict of interest that anyone needs to declare? If not, uh, the confirmation of the minutes of the previous council meeting, the September meeting, councillors, any concerns with the draft minutes as presented? If not, I declare those confirmed. Uh, minutes of the delegated and advisory committees, we don't have any of those, we have no petitions. So let's go straight away to item eight, officers reports. And some of these are ones that have been with us in draft form and we uh, tonight bring those to formal resolutions. I should say to the gallery that uh, there are a couple of items that as council in briefing has decided we'll, we'll seek some, um, uh, some officers uh, to or invite officers to present their reports because they're special issues that don't come before us or particularly important issues that we think some clarification by the officers might be helpful for the before we have the debate, the motion and debate. Um, but the first one, 8.1, I don't think we need that. Uh, in this case, the Municipal Health and Wellbeing Plan, Councillor seeking a motion. Thank you, Councillor Bella. I move that Council endorses the Municipal Public Health and Wellbeing Plan 2021-2025 for submission to the Department of Health on 27th of October, 2021. Thank you, Councillor Bella. Is there a second to that? I'd like to second that, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Sproul. Councillor Lavella, talking to the motion, please. Through you, Mr Mayor. Council has a requirement under the Public Health and Wellbeing Act 2008. The plan commenced development in May 2021 with Enable Health Consulting. A project steering group was established to oversee the development, development process with a general manager of community wellbeing, manager of community partnerships, manager of community engagement, manager infrastructure services, manager go golf fields, and enable health consulting. The due date for this was, submit, was to be submitted by the 24th of October 21. However, permission was granted to submit the final plan to the Department of Health on the 27th of October 21. 
The, the plan responds um, strategically to the following priorities in the Victorian Public Health and Wellbeing Plan 2019-2023. Tackling climate change and its impact on health. Now, this is a mandatory requirement for councils at this point in time. Two, preventing all forms of violence. Three, increasing healthy eating habits, increasing active living, improving mental, um, mental well-being and reducing tobacco-related harm. This is also mandatory. Internal and external stakeholders and including our community have contributed to the plan through a broad consultation process. So in conclusion, the final Municipal Public Health and Wellbeing Plan 21-25 is ready to, for Council to endorse and for submission to the Department of Health on the 27th of October. The plan was developed with input from over 190 partners and residents from Central Goldfield Shire. It aligns with the priorities and focus areas um, outlined the public health, uh, Victorian public health and wellbeing plan and complies with the Public Health Act 20, 2008, 2008. The next step is for the plan to be submitted and uh, as per the requirements under the Public Health Act. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Bellant. Councillor Sprout. Uh, nothing further there, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sprout. Other councillors? If not, I'll present the, uh, the motion as, uh, as presented. Uh, all those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. 8.2, Council Plan Action Plan Progress Report. Now, this is one we've started uh, a, a bit of a tradition, and I think it's a good one, of inviting the CEO to talk to the progress reports, to really summarise for council and for the gallery, the extent of work, the extent of activity that is being undertaken, because it's such an important and broad area. Uh, so, Ms. Rotti, over to you to invite you to present uh, the action progress report, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is the first quarter report for the 21-22 year. Um, council adopted the action um, plan progress, or, sorry, the action plan report um, at the end of last financial year. You'll note Thank that there Mr. are over. I'd like to make a point of order, Mr. Mayor. Shouldn't I? Shouldn't someone move it first? No, on, on point of order, the officers are able to present their report before the motion is 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 is, is taken is sought. So then, the person who is moving it really has nothing to move. Mr. Mayor. No, the, the motion is up to whatever councillors wish to move. The officers just present, present the report. They, uh, they're allowed up to, I think it's three minutes, uh, to present, uh, present, a, present the, a, a report. Okay, thank we you. We did this the last time. With the, then I'll call no, for, for the motions. And the motion might be the officer's recommendation or can be whatever else uh, a councillor seeks, seeks to move. Okay, thank you, Ms. Robbie. Back to you. So I note that in the annual action plan report, there's over 80 items um, or actions that are listed there. And uh, with the quarterly update report, I note that 45 items are well underway. Um, and many of those are actually on your agenda tonight. So a couple of the um, key uh, action items are things like the council plan and the council vision, um, the long-term financial plan, for example. There's also um, a large number of capital works projects that were listed in the annual action plan, which are also well underway. And uh, one of them being the Carisbrook Recreation Reserve uh, contract is again on your agenda tonight. So um, quite a lot of work going on. And as I said, over 40 actions well underway and uh, a number that will start also um, in the new year. So I um, present this report to you, as I said, as a, a first quarter update on the annual action plan. Thank you, Ms. Rafi. Uh, any questions off the, uh, uh, from the CEO on the report at all? If not, Council is seeking a motion. Seeking a motion. Councillor Murphy, you had your hand up before. You, 
wanting to move the motion or was that about the the uh, point of order uh, I'll, I'll do it uh, just go with the recommendation the council note as detailed in the report and update of the status of the projects identified in the 21-22 action plan thanks very much council a second seeking a second um, I'll you. second it. Thanks, Councillor DeVitt. Is Councillor Murphy talking to the motion? Yeah. Uh, no, I have nothing else to say. Thank you. Councillor DeVitt is? Nothing to add. Thank you, Mayor. Any other councillors? Look, I just wanted to say again, congratulations um, to, as we said last time, but I was recently at a regional um, uh, lot and friends so on, the, on the Bendigo side, a, a mayor's and CEO's meeting, and um, the burden of work on all councils, particularly small councils where regal room is just that much harder because of OP staff, particularly with all the statutory requirements, the fact that perhaps not all councils have been as successful we have with grants, but uh, we capital work, works projects and then the, the blight of COVID restrictions and, and the real burden of that which is consuming CEOs. Um, the fact that we're able to do anything is, is to me is amazing. So, look, congratulations to all the staff. This is a difficult time. There's a massive workload. And, and the fact that we're able to make so much good progress, including so many important developmental projects, including as well as the capital projects, but important things in terms of our systems, in terms of community wellbeing, right across the board. Congratulations to everyone. I'll put the, put the motion as presented. All those in favour? Those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.3, a section 11A instrument of appointment and authorization, uh, seeking a motion, councillors. Um, Thank you, Councillor I'll, I'll be happy to move, I'll, um, to move that the council adopt the attached section 11A instrument of appointment and authorization for the members of council staff set out in the instrument. And also that the attached section 11A instrument of appointment and authorization comes into force immediately and remains in force until council determines to vary or revoke it. And thirdly, that the attached section 11A instrument of appointment and authorization be signed. Thank you very much, Councillor. Is there a second to my motion? I'm happy to second that, Mr. May. Thank you very much, Councillor Lord. Councillor is um, I would just like to mention that the instrument of appointment and authorization is required due to staffing changes at Council and the instrument must be adopted by Council. Okay, thank you, Councillor Villiers. Councillor Lovett? Nothing to add, Mr. May. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Any other councillors? Not, I'll present the motion. All those in favour? All those against? The motion is carried. Item 8.4, uh, 8 Waste Services Contract Extension. Uh, now, this is, uh, yes, yeah, seeking a motion, councillors. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move the Office of Recommendations that Council, noting that a one-year extension is available under the current contract, Council Grant Waste Recyclers Victoria Proprietary Limited, an extension to the G1019-15 contract, for the period of 5th of October 2022 to the 5th of October 2023 for the value of $1,872,000 and Council authorises the CEO to execute the contract variation and seek a ministerial exemption from going to tender and enter into an agreement with JJ Waste and Recycling Proprietary Limited for processing of recyclables for a period up, to, up until 5th of October 2023. Thank you very much, Councillor Sproul. Seeking a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Long. Councillor Sproul, talking to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, there's a lot of changes going on uh, at multiple levels in regards to waste and recycling, which makes planning for our uh, future very difficult. Uh, over the next few years, there are different factors such as container deposit schemes or food and organic waste and glass separation, which, which will affect how we sort and process our waste. 
The path towards the future of waste is detailed and complex. It is something that cannot be easily adapted and ongoing changes make it even more difficult. Waste is a significant, waste is a significant expense for council and ultimately the ratepayer. This motion is needed in order to align plans and programs with current and future contracts. This provides the Shire with the time needed to thoroughly work through all the relevant information and conduct more research into how we collect, sort and process our waste. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Councillor Long. Nothing further to add. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Other councillors? I'll, I'll uh, present the motion. All those in favour? All those against? The motion is carried. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Murphy seems to have dropped off. So we might just for the minutes note that he has dropped off the meeting at this point under our um, procedure. He, he may rejoin and we'll minute that again. But just so you're aware, he seems to have dropped off the meeting. We'll pause. We have a pause then. I think under our right. Um, it's back. It's back. We can continue. We just minute when he rejoins. We'll just, just, you, okay, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. I didn't even notice that. Sometimes uh, people are not on their cameras and drop off. But uh, yeah, I have noticed that now. Um, uh, item eight point five: adoption of the community vision twenty thirty one and the council plan twenty twenty one to twenty twenty five. Uh, seeking a motion. Thank you, Councillor Vella. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Uh, Councillor Lovella, talking to the motion, please. I move that the recommendation, the council adopt the recommendation Central Goldfields Community Vision 2031 and Central Goldfields Shire Council Plan 2021 and tw to 2025. Thank you, Councillor Vella. Can Councillor Lovett, you're prepared to second that. Uh, Councillor Vella, talking to the motion. Now, this community vision and council plan is a perfect example of democracy at work. The community was empowered to decide how they would like to see their towns, communities, and indeed their shire evolve into the future. It is then the elected rep representatives, we the councillors, responsibility to ensure the community plan and vision is realised. I am so impressed with the process undertook in building the council plan and vision. The community advisory group and the um, council officers maintained a strong, cohesive and constructive working relationship for the finest outcome over and beyond expectations of which we are endorsing or hopefully endorsing today. And I'd just like to say a big thank you to uh, Kylie Long for her extreme professional skill in this area and indeed our Mayor with his exper very experienced input. We as a Shire following this endorsement will have in place the framework upon which to work with going forward. I, for one, am extremely thrilled about the future of this Shire and the positive direction I can foresee. So in conclusion, in a challenging year dominated by the COVID-19 pandemic, Council has not achieved, but not only achieved, but has exceeded its deliberative engagement obligations under the Victorian Local Government Act 2020. This is no small feat and the persevering, perseverance of all councillors, the community advisory group and CGSC staff, Central Goldfields Shire staff, is to be commended. And that this was written by the officers in their report. Council can feel confident in the priorities articulated in the draft community vision and draft council plan, knowing that sufficient community input on the work has been received, including recent feedback through public exhibition period. Following the deliberation on specific areas of focus in the draft documents, including draft vision and opportunities for growth, it is recommended that Council adopt the Central Goldfields Community Vision and Central Goldfields Shire Plan. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Lovett. 
nothing to add, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'm sorry, Councillor. I messed up the introduction before. Losing Councillor Murphy completely threw me. I couldn't handle the fact that we'd lost him, but he's back again. So welcome back, Councillor Murphy, on that. Um, any other councillors? Look, I, I, a couple of things I do want to add. First, first of all, thank you, Councillor Bellock, for the kind compliments. I certainly do want to join with you in uh, thanking uh, Kylie Long, our Manager Community Engagement. I mean, she has worked brilliantly and with the support of her very small team, but worked hard, uh, brilliantly and hard, I have to say, too, because a lot of councils grumble and many went to local government of Victoria saying we can't meet these statutory timelines, it's just too difficult. We did meet them and we met them really well and we've got quality documents. The thing that, uh, thing that really inspires me are two things. First of all, the level of community engagement from old and new, young and old, and it's just been tremendous. People who are prepared to see the future in this shire and to get behind it and want to do things. And, uh, and I thought that was just so exciting. The other thing is the vision itself. It came about uh, with, with a large amount of work from our community advisory group that we, that we set up. Uh, I mean, the vision is so full of good things and we are still going to be a vibrant community, vibrant community council ability. You wouldn't have had any. You wouldn't have had it anywhere, anywhere else other than being a vibrant community. But apart from that, um, a, a vision for, so, for seeing the great potential of this show. And I think the task we've got a council plan that really focuses on what we need to do to, to take the steps to make it happen. I think we've got absolutely the right community council plan. We have a great community vision. Now we've got to roll up our sleeves and uh, work to make it happen. I think we're positioned to do just that. We will do it, we will achieve, and have, what an exciting job that will be. I'll put the motion, all those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. Uh, item 8.6, the Carriers Book Recreation Reserve Main Works uh, Contract Award. This is another one as discussed, uh, councillors, that we thought that we agreed that it would be helpful to have the officers present uh, their report and recommendation, perhaps outline the process uh, that led to this uh, document coming before us and the contract coming before us. Uh, Mr. Collins, I'd invite you to uh, present the officer's report and recommendation, please. Okay, uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, um, the report tonight is in respect of the, the overall Carisbrook project, which is a $4.6 million project. Um, the contract, which is up for discussion tonight, is the largest of the contracts um, for the work. Um, it's our main works package. Um, and the tender, which is being put forward as, as a recommendation for adoption, is um, costed at 2.38 million, and that's inclusive of GST. Um, this is a really large piece of work, and um, it's important to just kind of talk through the process that led us to arriving at the recommendation. Um, the um, tender went out for um, kind of public um, availability. Um, I, a while back and, and we had um, five responses overall, um, each of which um, was in line with our kind of minimum requirements in order to enable us to score them. We appointed a tender panel with um, six officers, including myself, um, who worked through each of the tender responses with um, seven selection criteria, um, each of which had a particular weighting that included um, financial benefit to the community um, was one of the areas that we looked at in scoring the tenders that we received. Um, having gone through an intensive process um, with three separate meetings, um, we arrived at the conclusion, the unanimous conclusion that the, um, the preferred tenderer for this piece of work is Cyril Brothers and the paper tonight is recommending that um, Council um, awards the contract to Cerro Brothers at cost of 2.38 million, inclusive of GST. Thank you, Mr Collins. Uh, any questions of Mr Collins? If not, Council seeking a motion. Thank you, Council Davilius. 
Um, I would like to move that um, the tender for the contract G1480 slash 21 Kalisbrook Recreation Reserve be awarded to Sill Brothers Building Contractors as per the recommendation of the council officers. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, a second to the motion. Thank you, Councillor Robert. Councillor Davidia is talking to the motion, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would just like to congratulate um, still building contractors on, on um, gaining this tender. Um, they met with stiff competition from what I can gather. And thank you, Mr. Collins, for informing us and giving a detailed um, explanation as to how you came to um, uh, allocating the tender to Seoul. Um, and uh, uh, thank you so much for your work that you've done with in this regard. Thank you, That's all, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. May. Um, as Mr. Collins said, this contract is the largest part of the overall four million plus dollar upgrade of the Carisbrook Recreation Reserve. So it will be warmly welcomed by the community. I thought it was very pleasing that we had received a number of tenderers who were interested in, in uh, completing this process. And that gave the panel a chance to review all tenders very robustly. And we at the council table know that that was done very well. I think I'm right in saying that this is the largest contract that we have approved or are approving since we've come in as elected councillors. And uh, therefore, we've treated it very cautiously, asked all the questions that need to be asked and satisfied with the recommendation. And uh, I think council can be very well sat satisfied with the process we've been through and also the recommendation that we have put forward. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. No, other councillors? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Sproul? Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to add, I, I specifically spent a lot of time um, going over the officers' reports on, on this one. Um, I, I felt at times some of the, the reports and the comments and the scores didn't align. Uh, I you know, had some, some doubt at start. I made sure I asked a lot of questions uh, to clarify any particular points I had. And, and thank you very much to the officers for their responses. Um, you know, this is a two and a half million dollar contract. And ultimately I would have liked to have seen this uh, was awarded locally. However, uh, I asked every question and ensured uh, proper process was followed and every consideration given when scoring the tenders. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Any other councillors? Councillor Murphy. I'll be voting no. Um, I'll be voting no because I'm in that word twist in between. Um, I'm voting no for reasons. But firstly, I would like to say the officers officers doing the evaluation have done everything to the procurement policy, everything right to the procurement policy, to what the procurement policy currently is. However, I am concerned, and I always will be with the current procurement policy, very concerned, which really needs to be reviewed. And I think we're going to be doing that in the next few months, six months or so. <clears throat> I can't vote yes for this recommendation because I do not believe that the current procurement policy will, in its current form, is 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 correct. And it does, and, it, and I have I have lots of questions, like Council Sproul has, and and I'm satisfied with all the situations and all the answers, but I'm I, I just can't do it. I just cannot vote yes for this, and. I was thinking of just trying to defer it to have more understanding of it, but it's it's in the procurement policy and I just cannot vote for it. And there's real reasons I have and because of disclosures and that I'm not gonna I can't say the real reasons. So I am 
I, I will not be voting for this. I have real issues with the policy. I don't have issues with the, the tender or the evaluation committee, but I have issues of how we get there. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Other councillors? I will just, if I, I'll make one, a couple of comments. Um, I think, uh, and I thank Councillor Sproul for the comments. I thank Councillor, I think everyone for their comments. But um, as Councillor uh, Council Lovett summed it up, and you know, I think Councillor Sproul gave a very practical example, um, we did give this, because it's such a big contract, we did in briefing sessions ask a lot of questions. We gave this very, very heavy consideration far more than the once over. We gave it several times over because of, it, because of the importance of this. And I don't regret that process at all. I do think, thank Mr. Collins and the team for, for, your, for your ready answering of all those questions and, and the diligence. I think yeah, Councillor Sproul has acknowledged that. And uh, I'm also thank Councillor Sproul for being as diligent to, to ask those questions because as councillors, we, we, we have to be satisfied. Councillor Murphy, I understand your concerns. We are, in fact, uh, the good news, I've got a bit of good news for you, that we'll be reviewing the policy before six months. We have to review it within 12 months, to my understanding of the Local Government Act, 12 months of, the, uh, of uh, coming in to, uh, as a council. So that's on the agenda next month. So the opportunity for council to actually have a look at that policy will be there. But we do have a policy, and the policy uh, is as it is now, uh, and uh, I certainly will be, uh, uh, I, I believe we've, we've undertaken the right process in keeping with the policy. We can't do anything else. I will be voting in favour of the motion. Uh, I will give, uh, there's no other, uh, other councillors, I'll give Councillor the videos. you have right to reply as, as there is, uh, as Councillor Murphy has spoken against the motion, uh, you have right to reply and then I'll put the motion. Councillor, uh, Councillor Biddy for right to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr. May. Um, I um, spent a lot of time going through this report, and I am anxious to um, be involved with the process of reviewing the um, procurement policy. And luckily, that should be done before the end of this year. It needs to be finalized by the end of December. So hopefully we can move this forward um, because um, it, it will be, I mean, there are a few things that we would like to um, add to the procurement policy. Um, that's all I want to add. Thank you. As the videos, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Uh, item 8.7, adoption of the long... Excuse me, excuse me, Mr Mayor, I'd like to be noted that I was against. You have that recorded in a minute. You, you have a right to do that. Uh, Mr. Smith, could we record that in the minutes that uh, Councillor Murphy votes against the motion? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Murphy. Um, item 8.7, adoption of the long-term financial plan. This is, of course, a requirement under the new uh, Local Government Act 2020. It's a one, it's a one off. Uh, and uh, because of its uniqueness, its newness, and the fact we got a late submission to it, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I will seek uh, an officer's, uh, uh, an officer's uh, report or, or comments on the officer's report and recommendation. Mr. Smith, look to you for that. If you could just uh, uh, talk to uh, the officer's report and recommendation as presented. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So, as you say, this is a um, uh, requirement of the Local Government Act and the draft of this long-term financial plan came to cancel the previous council meeting, or the council meeting on the 28th of September and we sought public feedback. Um, I just want to acknowledge that in the report we didn't we didn't actually note feedback we received uh, as part of that process, and apologise to that to that person because what we got was really thoughtful feedback around the format, the content of the plan, and um, we will certainly be responding to those points made by by the person in regards to feedback given. the The feedback won't change the content of the plan, um, but certainly important and we really value feedback from our community. So I wanted to make that point that it wasn't in the written report, but verbally to acknowledge the feedback received uh, on, the re on, the re on the draft plan. The other, the other change you'll note from the draft plan in the, in the outward years, we've added $600,000 of additional capital works funding where we felt the, um, 
the cash position allowed us to do a little bit more in closing the renewal gap on our asset renewal. And you'll see that in a report as well, where we've added, added additional capital funding to our outward years um, capital program at this stage, Mr. Mayor. So that's all I just wanted to raise. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, any questions at, at all? Your hand was up, Councillor Murphy, or was that, we, we, was that, uh, any questions? Did you have a question before I get to Oh, no, I just wanted to say hello to Councillor Smith. Officer Smith. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Councillor Smith, you're right. Well, who knows what, who knows what lies in the future? That's well what done. This before. Sorry uh, about that. Uh, counselling, uh, using the term counselling, it becomes very, very uh, readily comes to mind. Uh, seeking a motion. Councillor Lovett, thank you so much. Mr Mayor, I would like to move that Council adopts the attached long-term financial plan 2021-2031 and Council also notes an availability of cash in the outer years of the plan which could reduce the asset renewal gap. This reallocation of cash will be reviewed closer to the period. Thank you, Council Lovett. A second to that, please. Councillor De Villiers. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lovett, talk to motion, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. In the past, I have to say that I've treated long-term financial plans as something of crystal balling. Once you get so far out, you're almost in unknown territory. But I have to say that I find this document actually being fiscally very responsible. As Mr. Smith has just said, the draft was put out to the community for comment. And he mentioned that one person did make comment and those comments have been taken on board. As a very young councillor, a long time ago, I was told by a very wise old councillor, you can go to a public meeting with a hundred people there and get nothing out of it. You can go to a public meeting with one person there and that one person might make the very comments that change your mind on a particular issue. So the numbers of people who comment don't really matter. It's the fact that they have the opportunity of commenting and we do appreciate the comments made by that individual. When I read this document, what it says to me that if we follow it, it will ensure that we as a council remain solvent over the next 10 years. And more importantly, that we will be able to continue delivering all the services that our community expect of us. And that's very important that we plan for that. I need to make mention that from 2025-26, up to 3031, particular focus has been given to asset renewal. And this is very important in a older community like Central Goldfield Shire, where many of our assets, although important historically, are really showing the signs of age. And I guess one of the best examples or one of the worst examples is the Miraburra Town Hall that we have literally had to close the doors on occupational health and safety grounds. So there's a perfect example of it. But also importantly, it needs to be noted that although we're putting a considerable amount of extra money into asset renewal in the last five years of this plan, which at the same time will reduce our working capital that may cause some people some concern. But I have to point out that the reduction in, in working capital still falls within the guidelines from the Victorian Auditor General in terms of sustainability. And this document actually should be welcomed by our community as a very, very financially responsible document. And I'm happy to move the motion. Thank you, Councillor Robert. Councillor De Villiers. Thank you. Nothing to add, Ms. May. Uh, any other councillors? Councillor Murphy. I'm just uh, with um, Councillor Lovett. I'd like to 
to concur. Also, I'd like to say that any in, in any financial situation, we have to be physically fiscal responsibility, and we have to always look look for the current and the future. And it's important to know where we what what, what the future will be, and the current and the current what we're trying to achieve. So any any moving forward is it's a bit like a succession plan. So we're going forward. This is what's going to happen, and well, I'm happy with the way it is. And um, the the fiscal responsibility is there, and this is important for the community and the ratepayers of our our uh, shire. And uh, knows that uh, well. I, the way I looked at it is, sees that we are pretty sound for the next ten years for sure, and it's. Uh, and fixing up all the the old the old buildings and things like that, which we've got a lot of them. It's very important. And the other one is that we're right now, like we're right next month, and we're right the month after, and we're right in two years' time. So all that's important. So I'm I just like to um, thank you to um, uh, uh, Mr. Smith and his team, the general manager and his team, uh, for this situation for putting this all together and uh, and being part of the audit and risk committee, it's uh, it's good to have there in the background. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Other councillors? I just wanted to uh, add or to link together three documents, so the third of three documents that, we, that we're dealing with tonight. We've got a council vision, uh, sorry, a community vision, 2031, a community vision that sets a, a really, really exciting, bold future for, 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 for our shire. We have a council plan that really sets the way forward about how we will move towards achieving that and achieving the prosperity, particularly that the, the community vision has in it. And it has some very, very real opportunities for us to, to, to capture those. But the financial plan shows us, as, as, as Councillor Lovett and, and Councillor Murphy particularly have pointed out, that we are still sustain sustainable and we are prudent, sustainable, and we are in a good position, sound position, notwithstanding. So I think that's the best possible situation. I mean, if we if we were so desperate and in really bad straits that, that we depended on growth opportunity, otherwise we would not exist, that would be a real worry. The great situation that we're that we are in is that we are sound. Uh, it's tough. We know we're in a very tough world with, with rate capping, as other councils of our size are. But we, but with, with prudent, good management, and, and through the, through this long-term financial re report uh, and plan, we know that we can exist and provide good services to our community. Continue to do that. Continue with asset renewal and maintenance, and do all those things. But above that, we have a real. A vision for for through our community for 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 growth for added prosperity and a council plan to, to take us on our way in a very meaningful sense. So I think we have the best of the of the three, and I think I think it's just an exciting time. Who would want to live at any other time? Who would want who would not want to be on council at a time like this? So congratulations to everyone involved involved in this and thank you to the community for their participation in this document and, and the others too. I'll put up at the motion, all those in favour, those against. Motion is carried. Item uh, 8.8, .8, the September finance report. Uh, seeking a motion. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Your motion. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to learn unmute. We all um, have a problem. Uh, the council receives and notes the, the attached financial report for the period to the thirtieth of September, which Thanks, is for three, three months. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Murphy. A second explanation. Thank you, Councillor Sprout. Councillor Murphy. Well, this is a this is a, the three months September, which is um, July, August, September report, which is which we do every every three months, and uh, it keeps being okay, being good. Like I, the last the whole year that we've been back in in town, this these um, 
financial reports have been good and the the the, the quarterly reports have been good. So, but I just really like to say that there's a couple of words in the conclusion which maybe the punters out in the gallery would like to know. So the council's financial position at the end of September 2020 is, is sound with cash and cash equivalents. Now that's good. That's good. Totaling 16.3 million. There's no major concern of issues of concern in either the operating or capital budgets. No bad look through it. There isn't there isn't any major concerns. We're not doing anything weird. There's there's everything good about that. And that says this also links in with the um the long-term financial plan. So these these reports link in with the long-term financial plans of where we're going and what we're doing. So um the, the mid-year report hasn't been completed, but it, all that also that looks fairly um, robust as well. So I'd just like to put this to the to the to the council. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Murphy, Councillor Sproul. Nothing further to add. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Sproul. Other councillors? Not. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Item 8.9, Denali and District Incorporated Community Grant Variation. Councillors seeking a motion. Councillor Long. Oh, well, Mr. Mayor, um, I would like to move that the council approve the proposal from Denali and District Incorporated to use the remaining $2,307 of grant funding awarded through the council's community grants program to deliver the Denali Unlocked project. Thank you, Councillor Long. A second to the motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Bella. Ward Council, I'm sure you are happy to talk to this motion. Over to you. Most definitely. Thank you. Through the Mayor. I'm delighted to move this motion that Council approves repurposing the remaining $2,307 of grant funding awarded to Denali and District Incorporated also known as DDI, through the Council's Community Grants Program to deliver Denali Unlocked. Like so many towns, Denali has had a pretty rough trot the last 18 months with COVID hitting businesses and individuals hard. One casualty was the proposed Gold Rush Festival that the DDI has been enthusiastically planning for the past year or so. Fingers crossed, this festival will hopefully be able to run this time next year. When I became aware of the plan to repurpose the remaining balance of funding to run a community event for Denali and district residents in December 2021, I was excited and extremely proud of the community to come up with such a great idea for the benefit of everyone. This one-off event is planned for Saturday the 4th of December. Local businesses will be funded to provide free catering for the community and music will be provided by local artists, again funded through the remaining community grants. Called Denali Unlocked, this event purpose is twofold. It will aid the well-being of local residents, giving them an opportunity to reconnect with friends and neighbours in an informal street-based setting, as well as giving local businesses and musicians a small but most welcome boost. Moreover, the timing of the event also supports Council's focus on promoting COVID and lockdown recovery. I look forward to seeing this event in December and applaud and commend the DDI for being so passionate about their community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Long. Councillor Bella. Well, I can't help but feel excited for you, Elizabeth, I, I'm a Councillor Long. It's fantastic. Uh, repurposing a positive outcome out of a negative COVID time. And I'll be there on the 4th of December. That's all, Mr Mayor. Thank you. I reckon Councillor Long might be shouting us all sausages and bread if we go up there on the 1st of December. Our other councillors. Yeah, I think, oh, yeah, Councillor Murphy. Well, here I go again. Um, the funding was to be used to support the development of the prospective Gold Rush Festival in Denali. It was funding that it was granted in the community grants funding. Um, and if we're looking at doing a, a Denali Gold Rush next year or the year after, I find it difficult that we're moving this money from one thing to another thing when it was granted for that. It's like buying a lawnmower, getting one group who wants to buy a ride on lawnmower, and then they want to get 
they don't decide they've someone else donated them something so they get something else. Or the sausage sizzle them. I think it's commendable what they're doing. I think it's a great idea. It's great. But it's 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 difficult to say, you know, we it's but you twixt in between, you you one place or another place. So I'm um I, I have, I'm hesitant because is it the right thing to do? Is it right thing to move a community grant to another area of the community, of this, the same community? So um, I just, it doesn't sit right with me, even though I want it to happen, it just doesn't sit right. So that's where I am. Thank you. Councillor Murphy, are you actually going to vote against the motion so I need to give Council Long a right of reply or are you just expressing some reservations? I, can, I, I have my right to vote against the motion at a later date. So, okay, well... I, if I can vote, I could vote yes or no when the hands go up. Yeah, I, I, well, I'll give you... In the, in the event, I'll still give the Council Long then a right of reply. But any other councillors? Councillor Long, do you want to write a reply before I put the motion, since there's um, been yeah, I'll just, Thank you, Mr Mayor. Through the Mayor, just quickly want to respond. Uh, I understand where Councillor Murphy's coming from. This funding was allocated for one particular purpose and is now um, being used for a different purpose. As Councillor Murphy probably realises, we're living in very strange times at the moment. Um, I would have loved nothing more than have, to have seen the Gold uh, Rush Festival happen this year, but unfortunately it just wasn't going to be. So to me, this is a, an alternate outcome, like uh, Council Lavella said, a, a positive out of a negative. Um, the other way we could have gone around is to refund the money to Council and then reapply next year. But the purpose and the outcomes of the event are basically the same. It's for community engagement, it's to bring everyone together. So, yeah, I, I feel it's, you know, it's a really positive thing and it'll be fantastic for the community of Denali. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Uh, now that concludes all the officers' reports. Um, we have no use of the common seal. We have no notices of motion. Urgent business councillors. No urgent business. Uh, other business, we have none listed. Uh, confidential business, we have none listed. Therefore, at uh, 6.54 p.m., I will close the meeting and thank everyone for their attendance and thank our virtual gallery and uh, stay tuned. We, we look to better times ahead from as we move into uh, lesser restrictions. Congratulate everyone on the vaccination rate. We're now over 95% first, uh, first vaccination and the first vaccination and nudging 75% for four seconds. So well over the state average and hopefully a key to better times and uh, uh, more more flexibility into council meeting procedures. But thank you, thank you everyone for participating. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, uh, executive.